Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're all faring well during this extended Twilight Zone episode that we all now know as everyday life. Part of what's making this stressful for everyone is not knowing how long it will go on. Nobody seems to know if it's going to go on for another month or another 18 months. One day they're saying 200,000 plus deaths, the next day they're saying 60k or maybe even less. It's really hard to tell how much of this is legitimate and how much of it is politically driven. Part of what makes it hard to determine that fact is the fact that our media is clearly aligned with one of the political parties and is clearly pushing their agenda. This past weekend of reporting underscores this reality, with both network and cable news deceptively reporting that the U.S. now has the highest rate of death due to the China virus. And today, the United States surpassed Italy as the country with the most deaths. This latest surge pushing the U.S. total beyond hard-hit Italy after already overtaking Spain, now the deadliest nation in confirmed COVID-19 fatalities. People who trust these hucksters probably watched this and thought to themselves that they were witnessing another Pearl Harbor or a 9-11. That's what the media wants you thinking to yourself. What they're actually doing is quite misleading and only serves to deflect from China and their lies. First off, we don't really know how many people have died in China because China's been lying about this since the beginning, a fact our media mysteriously wants to cover for. Second, the US is the third most populated country in the world, so naturally the raw numbers are going to look bigger than other countries. However, if you break that number down per capita, the US is nowhere near the highest rate of death in the world. According to the Media Research Council, as of Sunday, April 12th, the per capita number of deaths in the US stands at 6.61 deaths per 100,000 residents. In contrast with the UK, where the per capita rate comes to 15.84, and in France, where it's 21.48. Both the UK and France are sitting around 10,000 and 14,000 deaths, and each of those countries has a population of around 67 million residents. Per capita, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Belgium, and the Netherlands all have much worse rates of death than the US. And good luck finding any stats or charts showing the per capita breakdown by country. I couldn't find a single one or article about that. We'll get right back to exposing this latest media con job, but first I have an important message for all my viewers. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact, making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. Over at MSNBC, Joy Reid was spreading misinformation as usual, claiming that hundreds of mail carriers have died from the China virus. And one of the uh, groups of people who cannot uh, work from home are people who work in the postal service. 600,000 employees in this country. Um, hundreds of mail carriers have already died delivering our packages and our mail. Wrong. I'm not a highly paid journalist, but I just went on to Google, did a search, and found that only 19 mail carriers have died. What else is there to say? She either lied or she has no business reporting on the national airwaves. That brings us to Jake Tapdance over at CNN, who interviewed Dr. Fauci this weekend, but failed to fact check him when he claimed that he was warning Trump about social distancing in February. And something else I just want to point out, check out this headline. Fauci admits earlier COVID-19 mitigation efforts would have saved more American lives. Let me tell you, I watched the whole interview. At no time does Dr. Fauci do that. In fact, he smacks down Tapper and tells him that there's no way that we could know that. In reality, Dr. Fauci was downplaying the virus up until the end of February. If you take a look at where we are right now in the U.S., the U.S. now has 50 times more cases and almost 100 times more fatalities than South Korea. Uh, meanwhile, while the U.S. makes up only about 4.25% of the world's population, mm. 
The U.S. has 30% of the world's reported coronavirus cases and almost 20% of the reported coronavirus deaths. I just want to stop it here real quick. Tapper's being real deceitful with these numbers that he's presenting. First, he uses raw numbers for the OMG effect of 20,000 dead, then switch to the per capita while comparing the U.S. population to the rest of the world. He could have easily have done the same thing, but per country. But he didn't because doing so would have shown that things aren't quite as bad as they seem. Don't get me wrong now, all of those deaths are bad. I don't want people to die, just like I don't want that 500,000 people to die every year of heart disease. But let's put things in perspective here. If he'd have shown each country per capita, it would have shown that the US is nowhere near leading in deaths. Sanjay Gupta said, "That's this is all because we got started too late in the US. You know, it isn't as simple as that, uh, Jake. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, to just say this is all happening because we got started too late. But where we are right now is the result of a number of factors. The size of the country, the heterogeneity of the country. It's. I think it's a little bit unfair to compare us to South Korea. Okay, I just want to stop again to point out that Dr. Fauci actually backed up what I just said by pointing out the size differences of the countries. So kudos to him for smacking Tapper down on that. The New York Times reported yesterday that, that you and other top officials wanted to recommend social and physical distancing guidelines to President Trump as far back as the third week of February, uh, but the uh, administration didn't announce such guidelines to the American public until March 16th, almost a month later. Why? Do you think lives could have been saved uh, if social distancing, physical distancing, stay-at-home measures had started third week of February instead of mid-March? You know, Jake, again, it's the what would have, what could have. It's very difficult to go back and say that. As late as February 18th, Dr. Fauci was downplaying this outbreak. In fact, from January to at least the end of February, he was downplaying it. Perhaps that has something to do with why Trump didn't immediately order the nation to socially distance. We've never been through anything like this. It's brand new to everybody. CNN's favorite Botox sponge, Nancy Pelosi, was encouraging people to go out in groups and visit China town and that was on February 24th. So I can already tell what's going on here. CNN and the rest of the Democrat Party media are trying to set up the next impeachment narrative for Trump. We've seen this playbook before. Back during the Bush administration, the DNC media and the Democrats tried to claim that Trump knew about 9-11 but did nothing to stop it. At the time, polling showed that around 60% of Democrats thought that Bush either knew about 9-11 and did nothing to stop it or was actually behind the attack himself. Now they're going to do the exact same thing with Trump no matter how absurd it is. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and you want to support my mission, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.